And so in the future, we're using a process. We do a lot of work in 3D Studio Max, in Rhino, and we just bought, uh, it took us two years to buy it because it was $70,000, uh, Pro Engineer. And Pro Engineer, because you know how Pro Engineer is, it's all different modules. So you've got to choose your modules. Well, we, the modules we bought were 70 grand. And it allows us to do finite element analysis. So here's what we're going to do. We're taking our F-scan. We have an F-scan in the lab. And we've F-scanned lots and lots of people. So we know what the average distribution of force is standing and walking. We could adjust that force for that patient's body weight. I know it's not perfect and not accurate for that individual patient. And you could actually do a finite element analysis statically and on a single step. And now we're going to be working on sports specific for each individual sport and each individual position. And that, I expect, please give me about three years on that project. And that's a very expensive long-term project. And we just found out that we could take our 3D Studio Max and turn it into holograms in your office. How would you like to show the patient walking on your table in a three-dimensional hologram? I'll tell you how good this technology has gotten. It's a company called ProVision. And what they do is they have it so cheap now that you're going to see three-dimensional holograms in Coke machines. You're going to walk by a Coke machine, and there'll be a giant Coke can spinning in 3D that you walk right through. There'll be, a, there'll be 3D holographics in McDonald's. They have one with dancing french fries. And it's all done in 3D Studio Max, which is our venue. That's what we use a lot of. With this information of the corrected and not corrected postures of the foot, we're going to be able to collect. We do about 6,000 pairs of orthoses a month. We're going to be able to collect 12,000 pieces of data every month. So it'll be a research study with a massive end. It'll be enormous. And in short order, we'll know the averages, the pathological limits, the mean values, the distribution. And then we're going to update it so that there'll be a bell curve. And you'll find out where that patient falls on the bell curve distribution of foot postures, which is very, very interesting. And that's one of the things that I think is a fertile area for research in the future. So we're actually in inviting everybody that uses this technology to be part of the largest biomechanical research study in history. It's kind of fun. It's really kind of fun. And we're going to need people like Dr. Robel and Dr. Najafi who actually know how to look at this data and make meaning out of it. So that's kind of exciting. I, I hope that I can feed some of this data to some of these brilliant people. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for, for having me today. This is the direction we're moving in. It's really exciting. And one more last thing. About 2% of all studies in our journal, JETMA, are RCTs, Randomized Controlled Clinical Trials. All the rest of them are what's called expert opinion. Most articles in JAPMA are expert opinion. Dr. Guido Laporta was supposed to be here, and he, he unfortunately got sick, and he's got a, a hip replacement, and he couldn't come to Chicago and risk not being able to do his hip replacement. So I had a recording of Dr. Laporta giving an expert opinion, and I thought, I thought it would be just kind of a tribute to really one of the icons in our profession. And I have to uh, quote Isaac Newton. He said, if I've seen further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. And I have certainly stood on the shoulders of giants. And those giants are people like Merton Root, John Weed, Guido Laporta, Doc Dockery. And this is the expert opinion of some of the icons in our profession, Dr. Guido Laporta. Well, I have three people using them in the office, uh, myself. And my two associates, Dr. O'Donnell and Dr. Dempsey. Um, and in fact, I was talking to uh, Steve LeBaron about this yesterday. And um, we probably have gotten the least complaints 
and turnarounds with soul supports that any other lab we've ever used. Um, and that's important to us because nothing rankles me more than having to go through an exam, a cast process, send to the lab, get the orthotic back, and then something's wrong. And then we have to send the orthotic back and, and, and whatever. Uh, so uh, we're very pleased with soul supports. Uh, I have to admit that, to me personally, I'm surprised about that. Because when I, when I first saw them, I said, hmm, I've seen these high arch devices before. These can't possibly be comfortable. And to my surprise, they're incredibly comfortable to patients. Uh, and um, uh, I think you have to grasp the total contact nature of the device to appreciate that, that uh, um, uh, we, we've, we've been very pleased with the device, patients have been. Um, probably one of our, I wish they, f they fit in certain types of shoes better. But then again, if, if, you're, if you're dealing, you're, if you're trying to influence the mechanics of the way somebody walks, you may not be able to do that in Ferragamos. Okay, you know you might you might you might need uh, New Balance. All right, so uh, so I can live with that. But uh, they've worked very well. Yes, uh, and my experience has been positive. I have a uh, a, a world class uh, bad hip uh, that the. Uh, Orthotics have allowed me to function. Not that I, I don't, you know, they've obviated the need for a hip replacement. I need that done, but the orthotics have allowed me to function pretty comfortably uh, compared to what I was functioning at. Actually, we were, he was able to put off his hip surgery for two years. Another expert opinion, and I wanted to expose this to you because. Doc Dockery has probably been the greatest influence on my life personally. And uh, he has such an interesting story to tell. And what I did was, I actually, he tells his case. And remember, a case study is just a, an N of one. But being Doc Dockery, it certainly is expert opinion. Because there are hardly fewer experts as notable as Dockery. He's written 110 peer-reviewed articles, three textbooks. Numerous chapters. He's one of the one of the greats, the giants in our profession. And what I did was, I put the number of orthotics he's tried, and he told me personally how many they were, on one side, and his diagnoses on the other. The majority of my life, I've had foot problems, and when I was a kid in high school. All my buddies were wearing really nice cowboy boots because I was in Oklahoma. And I had a bad time wearing cowboy boots. They, the balls of my feet hurt, my heels hurt. Uh, I was not comfortable in them. And that never stopped. And through college, I tried all kinds of shoes because my feet always hurt. My arches hurt, my balls of my feet hurt. When everybody wanted to go out dancing and doing stuff, I was wanting to go back to the back to the dorm or back home or whatever. My feet hurt. Uh, and the podiatrist I met who really influenced me to go into podiatry made me some little plastic inserts. And they helped. They helped some, but I still had terrible, painful feet. And through podiatry school, I probably had four or five pair made every year because I would get different people to make them and see if I could find them, putting all kinds of pads on them. And I tried all the over-the-counter stuff that was available back then all the way up till a few years ago. Uh, when I became a podiatrist, I had what I thought were some of the best podiatrists around, the sports medicine podiatrists, the guys that had big practices, make me orthotics. And all of them helped a little bit. All of them made me a little better, but none of them worked. None of them got rid of the problem. Uh, most of the guys that train with me or people that know me well know that I was always wearing these really ugly shoes because they were the ones that didn't hurt me as much. But 
they weren't dress shoes. I couldn't wear the pretty Italian shoes or the nice lace-up shoes. My feet hurt too much. I would go to conferences and I'd have to sit down while other people are talking to me because my feet were hurting. And as you know, when I heard your lecture first, I said, I'll make you a deal. If you can make me an orthotic that does what you said it'll do, I'll invite you to our conferences. Well, you've been coming for 11 years now, so it worked. And, and I have to say that I have some photographs of, of my feet that Dr. Crawford uses in one of her lectures uh, from back then, where I had the crossover second toe, I had a big callus under the second metatarsal. Uh, during that time before the soul support, I had either 12 or 14 cortisone injections into my heel because my heel was hurting. Um, I had a, a limitation of the great toe, so I had a real stiff joint, but all of my shoes had a lump over the, the hallux because all the motion was occurring in the IP joint. So when I would step off, the IP joint would bend up and push into the shoe. So if you look down on top of my shoe, it had a lump there. Um, all of that went away within the year. Uh, it took me probably two to four weeks to really get used to the insert uh, because it was so different than everything. I had a bag full of orthotics and Dr. Schultz and Spinco inserts and rubber gel pads and None of that stuff really worked. It all made me a little better, but after about a month, when I could wear the soul supports all day and I didn't feel them, I started to realize that if I spent the weekend in my house slippers around the house, my feet started to ache and hurt again. So I got a second pair and I put them in my, my house slippers. So if I went for my shoes, I went into the soul supports in my house slippers without changing them and I put them in other shoes. Then I started getting nicer shoes, and then I started realizing my feet didn't hurt at all. I was walking all over the place. I was playing golf and my feet didn't hurt. It's like, that's unreal. And then I would see you again and say, I want a new pair, I want a new pair, because I want to take the old ones and put them in my work shoes. I want to put these over here and I want shoes and all. I want new ones in my daily shoes and I want the older ones in my scouts around the edge. <laughs> and, um, so, you, you said I influenced you. You made me be able to keep going because nothing ever worked until I got these orthotics. And now my feet look great. I've got, I've got motion in the great toe joint, which shouldn't happen. It was already stiff. It shouldn't get loose. But it did because when he brought the first ray down, the toe started to be able to move again. Now it works great. You look at my shoes. There's no lump where my big toe is. Uh, when I stand down, my second toe is straight. I have no callus on the bottom. Looks like baby's foot, baby's butt there. It's nice and smooth. And so essentially, the, the style of orthotic that you made, which was really hard to get going because it was so different. I mean, it took me a long time to get used to it. When I did, I couldn't live without them now. It's just like, you know, say, you left your orthotics at home, then I'm going back home and get them. I'm not going to go to the airport. I'm gonna, I can't go to this meeting without my orthotics. <laughs> And I really put that up there to say thank you to Gary Dockery because he has really made my life a whole lot better and taught me an enormous amount about how the foot functions. Um, and, and Guido Laporta, who I think we all owe a great debt to, he has taught us an enormous amount about the foot. And I also want to thank Dr. Horsley, who has been very gracious to put this whole seminar on, it's amazing. And uh, I think now we can move on to the panel discussion if you like. Thank you very much. <laughs>